and the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! here and it is Saturday and you know what that means it's time for the toy news acts for your news of the week that interested me that hopefully interests you in a fairly decent toy news week this week not the biggest week we've ever had and we're gonna dive into all the stuff here but first got some housekeeping I literally just got in through the door I was in Nebraska this week oh shout out to everybody over there in Nebraska did get to see the priest so if they called for the priest in Nebraska I heard the call I went over there of course went to Sabaton they were opening up for priest so always good to see Rob Halford and the boys Andy Sneep Richie Faulkner Ian Hill Scott Travis Oh, they were all there. And I did score second row ticket center, $56. Yes, last minute purchase. That's what you got to do. Wait to that last minute on those concert tickets. Come in, swoop on in, get second row. I did post uh, some of that on my Instagram feed. Also, you'll see it in the toy news, or not toy news, the figure hunt. Of course, my Nebraska figure hunt. I'll put some clips in that as well. So stay tuned for that. Maybe more on that in the weekly purchases tomorrow. Uh, but some figure hunting going on over there. I found a few things. Once again, you'll see that. But uh, let's dive into the Patreon. Of course, Patreon, the month of September, almost up. If you want to get in on the Honky Talk Man giveaway, got him right here. Greatest Hits Series 1 Target Exclusive. Check out the Patreon. That's the giveaway. We'll have a new Patreon for October as we're into the spooky season. We're going to have some spooky unboxings, all kind of stuff in the month of October. We'll also do some horror-related giveaways. Uh, I think I'm going to lean in. Uh, we'll figure it out. I'll post it on socials and stuff. But I'm leaning towards some Universal Monster giveaways for the month of October. So check that out. Also might have some uh, giveaways available to all. So make sure you follow the Patreon. Link in the description down below. Support the channel, as we always do say. But now we got to get down to business here. Let's get down to it. Uh, we do got Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con, coming around the corner here at the end of October. So I wouldn't be shocked to see some uh, quietness in the toy news the next couple of weeks, as a lot of uh, companies think are holding off a little bit of news for that. We'll see what ends up happening. So stay tuned to that. I think that's like the 20. 19th 20th whatever it is end of october new york comic-con if you're going hey head on out there i wish i was going i am not going so there you go but let's dive into some wrestling news and the toy news this week a guy that's been all of over AEW tv the last month or so of course he's making his triumphant return to the ring at wembley stadium then wrestling on dynamite grand slam this week one nigel mcginnis well they did say he will be the next Ring of Honor Jazzwares Vault figure. Will be a throwback Nigel McGuinness figure here. Looking interesting. Looking like a young Jason Mayhem Miller. Shout out to John. Good friend of the channel. Patreon member as well. Uh, great minds think alike over there. He posted that. I was going to post the exact same thing. I was like, this looks like Jason Mayhem Miller. That's for the deep UFC fans back in the day, of course. But Nigel McGuinness coming to the Ring of Honor line. Wouldn't be shocked for the original Jazzwares AEW line in the future as well. We did have a Nigel figure way back in the TNA Jax days. So not his first figure, but a lot of people are going to want this one. I would think uh, Nigel, hardcore Nigel fans, uh, would be interested to see where his career goes in the future as well. But he is coming. This week, however, the Jazzwares Vault, Brody Lee, a throwback Brody Lee, up for sale right now. Go over there if you're after that thing. Um, it is up. It is up in the vault right now. Uh, probably ringside collectibles as well in the near future. No Mattel news this week, though. No new Mattels. Wrestling news, they're laying in the weeds. However, our friends over at Ringside Collectibles, Discount Code Kyle, save 10%, of course. We will see next week. Uh, I think tomorrow they come in the mail for me, but I got the new WWE Ultimate Editions. Uh, I got the Royal Rumble set and the Mania set, WrestleMania Build-A-Figure set. All of those shipping at the same time. So we're going to be bombarded with some wrestling unboxings like usual, but we got some new sets to unbox Probably next week and the next week. Heck, I haven't even got... Uh, I have all the greatest hits unboxed, that last Ultimate Rock. I got so much stuff on Patreon that we've never got out to traditional YouTube. So it's another thing. If you're a Patreon member, you get a lot of videos early. Just a lot of videos. And there's so much coming, it's really tough to keep up. And I'm doing four videos a day. I don't know anybody else that's doing that much content. And I can't keep up at that point. There's a lot of figures coming out, as we do know. But more to come. More to come. We also saw this week from old Grapplers and Gimmicks, Hastel Toys, showing off that Macho Man. He's getting ready to go. He's looking good in his gold. 
stay tuned for some Macho Man. It's going to be quite a year for Macho Man figures, as we do know, between all the retro lines that are releasing him. He also showed off Heel Tatanka, the first ever Heel Tatanka figure of all time. We got that coming from Grapplers and Gimmicks. I'm sure pre-orders sooner rather than later. Stay tuned to all that kind of stuff. Now we're going to celebrate a little anniversary here. Yes, anniversary celebration. Big Bag Toy Store 25th anniversary. They have a 25th anniversary sale going on every single day. They have different deals like clearance things, hot deals on stuff. I think the first day they had some really cheap NECA gargoyles. That would be a good one to dump into if you're after that. But they also showed, kind of hidden, but it showed every like week and day there's some different things that are going to be exclusive to Big Bad Toy Store. And one that really caught my eye at the end of October, looking like new Legion of Doom, Big Rubber Guys, Road Warriors. We'll see what happens with that, but it looks to be Big Rubber Guys over there at Big Bad Toy Store. So very excited for that. You know me, I'm a sucker for face paint. I'm going to want to be involved in that one for sure, so stay tuned to that. This week, though, they did do a little Mythic Legions Big Bad Toy Store exclusive. Stavros the Unwavering. Yes, a dragon with a shirt on. Yes, it is, but Mythic Legions has that as a Big Bad Toy Store exclusive. Only place you're going to be able to buy that is over there, so head there if you want to. Of course, for a long time, viewers of the channel, I've been collecting Mythic Legions for a long time. Never got around to unboxing them. That has changed. We're into like week number two, I think it is this week of Mythic Mondays on Kyle Peterson 2.0. If you haven't subscribed to my second YouTube channel, there's a lot of overflow. There's a lot of extra unboxings over there. We do a Turtles video every single Tuesday. Now we're going to do a Mythic Legions video every single Monday. I'm going to go through. I have a stack like you wouldn't believe over there. We're just going to do one a week. That's what we're going to do. Probably take us two years, maybe longer to get through them all, but they are over there. It is something different, something pretty fun. We're going to dive into the Legions forever together, I guess, at this point. And uh, part of the fun is, can Kyle pronounce the name of the character or not that's another fun part of that so check out mythic mondays on kyle peterson 2.0 make sure you subscribe over there and if you're after stavros <laughs> the unwavering make sure you go to big bad toy store of course uh, we also saw Big Bad Toy Store come this week with Player 2 version M. Bison as a Big Bad Toy Store exclusive. I like that Street Fighter line. I keep saying I'm going to get them all, but I haven't been getting the Player 2 versions. It's just too much for me. Uh, I like Street Fighter. I'm not like Street Fighter is my thing. If Street Fighter was my thing, I'd be all in. But I like it enough to be dangerous. It is not one of my top 10 favorite toy lines of all time. So I'm not going to dive in that deep. I will get the core characters. Uh, but if you're after it, Big Bad Toy Store, the only place you're going to get that one there. And then flipping it back to Mythic Legions a little bit, more of like the Four Horsemen, of course, who designed the Mythic Legions, Cosmic Legions, and the figure Obscura. We talked about this last week, of course. Toy News always filmed on Friday afternoons. We didn't know what it was going to be yet. Was it going to be Ben Franklin? Was it going to be Frankenstein? Well, Frankenstein won out, and we got an old-timey, old-school based off the book Frankenstein. And we've seen him before in different uh, depictions and movies, things like that. It's not, of course, your universal monster Frankenstein. It's just a old school Frankenstein, but great for customizers as these usually are. A lot of accessories of this one went up last Saturday and then they put it back up. So it was very interesting. They obviously made a lot more of these than some of the ones in years past. And it's always trying to find that supply demand, especially with a growing uh, brand like Mythic Legions. Uh, you, know, you gotta raise it every single time, but do you raise it too much, too little? It's always tough to find that sweet spot. Uh, but it sounds like as of right now, you can still buy that Frankenstein. Frankenstein. So if you're after it, pick it up. Great for the spooky season. Ship it immediately. Hopefully we'll have that unboxing sometime in the month of October. Be great if I get my dad there. Going to call out the light to my dad. Uh, of course, every week on the channel this week, got to give a special shout out to everybody for getting hitting 44,000 subscribers on this channel. We did a top 10 Davy Boy Smith British Bulldog countdown. When we hit those thousand markers, we'll do a top 10. Month of October, I'm thinking about taking a left turn. We did the Mutants, Monsters, and the Mayhem. We did those last year. What can we do for Halloween like top fives? If anybody's got any recommendations, put them in the comments down below. I'm almost thinking about doing like a NECA Universal Monsters top five, maybe a color and black and white top five because they don't always line up the same. So I might do that. Maybe doing a top five of just not figures in general, but we can show some figures of my top five horror like icons, mascots, characters, whatever you want to call it that aren't Universal Monster, that it's kind of like the second or third coming, whatever you'd want to call it, of course. Uh, that would be like your Chuckies, your Michael Myers, your Pinhead, your Leatherfaces, Freddy Krueger, maybe a top five of that or something. But I'm open to ideas. Shoot it in the comments down below. But it is Halloween season. I feel like we should do something like that. So there's possibility for some of those um, unboxings and countdowns on the channel this month. 
Uh, Christopher Lee Dracula supposed to be on my doorstep today, so very excited about that. I know my dad wants no part of that one. He hates those Hammer films. Hates the Hammer films. He's a Universal guy. Universal guy through and through. But it'd be great to get him back. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call out the the bat signal to him. I don't know if that'll work, but eh, it's worth a try. All he can say is no. That's the, a lot of things. People don't do stuff. The worst they're gonna tell you is no. So shoot your shot. That's what I'm gonna say right there. Off on a tangent, if there ever was one, but. Continuing on with some of the other news, and I guess, of course, as Jerry Reed would say, we're diving into the home stretch of the toy news here. Like I said, not as much news this week. Mondo, Spider-Man the Animated Series, saw that in person at San Diego Comic-Con. Spider-Man the first release there. Talk about a slippery slope, and I always have the devil and the angel on my shoulders with these Mondo releases. You guys know how expensive they are. I'm all in on He-Man, all in on X-Men Animated Series, dabbling on a few others, but Spider-Man is something near and dear to my heart. Like kids of my age bracket that love the X-Men Animated Series, you love the Spider-Man Animated Series. They went hand in hand. They were two great shows. Part of me wants to dive into the Spider-Man line, but I'm like, it's too much money, it's too much space, too many cool figures. That's what it's going to be because they're going to have Venom, they'll have Carnage, Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Hobgoblin, Vulture. It'll go on forever. They're going to have a Peter Parker, they'll probably have a Mary Jane and Aunt May. I don't have room for all that. I just don't have room for all that. Those Mondos take up a lot of real estate. However, that all being said, I picked up the Spider-Man. I said to myself, Kyle, you're just going to buy the Spider-Man and maybe Venom, maybe Venom, and that's where you're going to call it quits. We'll see what happens. So I did pre-order the Spider-Man up right now, of course, if you want to dive into it. As of right now, I'm saying I'm just going to mix him in with my X-Men animated series. Just going to mix him in, and that's going to be it. We'll see what ends up happening in the future. But if you're after that, it begins right now, right here. So stay tuned for more from Mondo. Of course, New York Comic Con, they're going to have exclusive after exclusive after exclusive, as we do know. Uh, but speaking of NECA Comic Con, they did this week put up those uh, exclusives to the con. Now, last week we talked about the Kevin Eastman Ninja Turtle. We talked about those no good Ben Cooper kids. Well, then I think it was Saturday after I filmed this video, they did finally announce the Universal Monster Invisible Man Glow in the Dark Edition. We've seen these glow in the dark ones at the different Comic Cons, New York and, of course, San Diego. Invisible Man was there this week. I did was lucky enough on. Uh, See, was it Wednesday, Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. I did get all three pre-ordered. Wednesday, I got skunked out because I got the Vault uh, Brody Lee. I got the Demo Man from Masters of the Universe, and I forgot about the NECA stuff. But I got those. Next day, luckily, I got the NECA stuff, and I could say, okay, moving on, moving on. So if you're after that, there may be some available at the NECA store still, Invisible Man. Uh, we also saw this week, pre-orders are up, and you know me, I am not a Sesame Street guy. That was one of the meanest streets of all time. Growing up on the west side, of course, west side KP is known in some circles, uh, a dangerous breeding ground for trouble. And if you thought the west side was trouble, there was even more trouble on that street called Sesame Street. Bert and Ernie there, there was birds running around, there was things in the garbage can, there was Grovers flying through the air saying he was super. A lot of mental illness on Sesame Street, I'll have to mention that as well. But I hated Sesame Street. And I've told the story before. My grandma as a kid, I'd have you know, I'd go to my grandma's, she'd try to put me down in front of Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, and I would say, Grandma, no. I'd I'd get my food tray with my like rice crispy and my lemonade, I'd flip it up and I'd throw it back at her. I'd say, Grandma, I'm not watching this Sesame Street stuff. I don't want any part of these puppets. It's not a street I want to be a part of. I'm a Joe kid, I'm a Transformers mask, that kind of stuff. That's what I'm watching, Grandma. I'm not watching this. I don't want to learn in my off time of school. I'm not here to learn. And of course my uncle a little bit older than me, you know, five, ten years, he was that generation that ate up the Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street, so she naturally thought that I would like that stuff too, and it couldn't be farther from the truth. To this day, not a Sesame Street guy, so Bert and Ernie, I don't want anything to do with them. Don't want anything to do with them. They can join NECA's Bon Jovi for all I care, so shout out to the Sesame Street, the mean streets of Sesame Street. Not going to be for me, but maybe for you, maybe for you, maybe you love Bert and Ernie. You can get them, put them in a bubble bath, do whatever you want to do. Uh, but Bert and Ernie coming to NECA, pre-order available right now. And one that came out of totally left field this week, Zombie Sailor Toys, of course, known for his wrestling retro, but he branched out with a little Bruce Lee. We got some more Bruce Lee in the future, but perfect for the Halloween season. We're going to get groovy. We got Bruce Campbell. We got Ash from Army of Darkness. So apparently he signed the Army of Darkness franchise. We're going to have an Army of Darkness line from Zombie Sailor Toys. Not going to be for everybody. For me right now, though, I'm going to pick this one up. Looks very, very good. Very excited to see old Ash in the plastic form from Zombie Sailor Toys. So if you're after that, there's a lot of Army of Darkness fans out there. I do know that. I think this will sell pretty well for them. 
Moving on, we did get a little of an announcement, and by the time you watch this video, it could be fully announced. It is Storm Shadow, of course, G.I. Joe, um, Super 7 Ultimates line. I wouldn't be shocked to see this maybe as a New York Comic Con exclusive. I could see that as well. Uh, we saw pictures of this or leaked images of this a while back. I mean, we showed them in the toy news, and at the time, I wasn't feeling it. I really wasn't. It's basically a repaint of the original Storm Shadow, which really doesn't work with version 2 Storm Shadow. Good guy Storm Shadow, as he's known in my circles. Uh, it's a circle you want to be in, trust me. Uh, Storm Shadow, I don't know. We'll see what happens, but coming soon. Got to imagine New York Comic Con, we're going to get a few other exclusives as well, so we'll stay tuned to that, of course. And we're finishing up the toy news before the album of the week, a little Turtles of Grayskull. We saw the next wave kind of announced. I'm sure pre-orders coming sooner rather than later. We did see Clamp Champ joining the Turtles of Grayskull. We saw Ninjor as well. And then Leonardo and Mikey. And now this is, what, the third Leonardo here? It's really not terribly different from the last one either. So a little disappointed in that one. Gotta say, it is winding down. I know I talked about it in my recent unboxings on the channel of the Turtles of Grayskull. Mattel said that to everybody at their panel. I talked to Mattel as well. Thundercats He-Man has taken over for Turtles of Grayskull in 2025. Now, 2025 could be September. It could be January. More likely off at the end. We still got some more waves of the Turtles of Grayskull. It is not complete quite yet. But it'll be interesting to see what this Lion-O, Thundercats, Turtles of Grayskull, He-Man, or I guess no Turtles of Grayskull in that, but He-Man, Thundercats crossover is going to look like. I'm excited to see it. I'm glad it's not a separate line. I'm glad they're canceling one, moving on to another one. That's what I want to see. So stay tuned for more on that in the future here. But uh, I don't know, do we need another Mikey and Leo in this line? To me, that tells you the gas is kind of running out is what it feels like to me. Your opinion may be different. Shoot it in the comments down below. And that is it for the toy news. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. A dash of the other this week. But what we do got is the album of the week. All right, album of the week time and album of the week this week. Maybe it's just because of recency bias, but it's fresh in my brain. It is, of course, Judas Priest, a great Judas Priest, one of the cornerstones of heavy metal. If you're not down with the Priest, man, what are you doing? Love Rob Halford and the boys. Obviously, 50 years they're celebrating right now. They've been around a heck of a long time and so many great albums. And I always go back and forth with different eras of Priest. I even love the Ripper Owens era. I got to see Ripper back in the day for Judas Priest. My first ever Judas Priest show way back when. I love the Priest. I've seen him. I think this concert I saw was maybe the 10th time I've seen him. Always a pretty good show, uh, but the Judas Priest, so many good albums, but I will say always at the top of the list for me is the Painkiller album. That is Album of the Week. I think it was Album of the Week when we first started Album of the Week many moons ago on this very channel, but it is a classic album, and if somebody asked me, and I'd be interested to hear your opinion, if somebody said, Kyle... What is heavy metal? Can you give me something that will tell you what heavy metal is? I would hand them Painkiller. That is the album that explains heavy metal because it has thrash metal in it. It's got classic rock. It's got classic metal. It's got a little bit of ballad -y action in it. It's got a little bit of everything. It's an all-encompassing metal album, and it is possibly the greatest metal album of all time, or at least on the Mount Rushmore for me personally. Uh, a game-changer album, the first ever Priest album I heard as a very little kid. Of course, Priest just put that thing out there and then broke up. And it was a wild thing, but man, they set the tone for the future of metal. Uh, a lot of the changes that we saw in metal in the 90s, and this was released, of course, in the 1990, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 91 even. Uh, but it was so far ahead of its time, especially at the time. Just soaring vocals, and of course the song Painkiller cannot be beat. They played Painkiller the other night. Halford's struggling a little bit. He's not what he once was, but who would be after 50 years? Who'd be after five, like me doing this channel? I'm not what I once was either. Uh, that's just the way it goes. So uh, amazing, though. If you've never heard Painkiller, you owe yourself to at least hear that album. So many great Priest albums. I'm riding that Priest high from the concert. And at this state of the game, you never know when it's the last time you're going to see him. So you got to enjoy every single one of those. I'm very excited to see Iron Maiden about a month from now as well. Always great to see Priest. Always good to see Maiden. I would love to see both of them when the time is. Time to call it quits. Let's do it. Let's put those two together. Let's do a huge stadium tour. Put Anthrax as an opener or something like that as well. I can see that happening. 
I think the problem is, of course, Judas Priest doesn't want to go on uh, before, uh, before Iron Maiden. They want to close because I think the priest camp says, hey, wait a minute, we came before Maiden. They should open up for us. And I'm not sure. Somebody can fact check it as well. I think Judas Priest has probably sold more albums than Iron Maiden, but we all know Iron Maiden a heck of a more lot popular band in this day and age, especially in their tours and stuff. So it's one of those kind of things, give and take, and egos get involved, and that's what happens there. But once again, Painkiller, Album of the Week, so many good hits, basically a greatest hits album. If you've never heard it, check it out. That is the Album of the Week. And that is it. That's the Toy News. That's the Album of the Week. Uh, we're moving on to Greener Pastures, the month of October, the spooky season, Halloween around the corner. Like I said, a lot of Halloween stuff, a lot of horror-related unboxings probably coming this month as well. Got to figure out some top fives to go along with it. So put your comments down below if you got some good ideas for me. But a lot going on. And of course, best way to stay tuned to everything that's going on, make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, my other YouTube channel. Check out the Patreon giveaways over there, monthly Q&As. Just filmed that before this video. So I'll have a brand new Q&A up on the channel this weekend. Uh, we, of course, got pizza reviews, dog stuff, uh, giveaways, you name it. It's all going down on the old Patreon. Early access to all the videos and all the glamour shots from the videos as well. Check out ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. My new book on Kindle, The Complete Guide to the Jax Class Superstar Series. Uh, hardcover, softcover is available, but now Kindle for others that want that. And then, of course, don't forget social media, Sir Paul 64 on the X, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on threads. And on Instagram. So for the toy news of the week, you know what I'm doing. I'm rocking and rolling, strutting and strolling my way into another weekend.